Private Ryan got saved and Mormons found a home on this day. Welcome back to On This Day. Today's date is July 24th, 2023. It is the 205th day of the year. There are 160 days left in 2023. It is the 30th Monday in the 30th week in the 34th day of summer. 61 days left until fall. Today is National Marine Week or Day. Contrary to the title, National Marine Week is celebrated for two weeks, basically, a fortnight. This is a day we set aside to appreciate marine life, or sea animals, whatever you want to call them. I'm sure some of you thought this had something to do with the Marine Corps. No, it's about animals, otters, whales, things of that nature. You know, you ever have one of those moments where you're like, oh my god, I never realized that. I was watching some documentary and they were talking about, you know, the oxygen we breathe and how it's generated and i always assumed it was forests like the amazon and things of that nature that just create all the oxygen i did not realize that the algae in the ocean supplies a ton of the oxygen to our atmosphere amazing there's a lot that goes into that but that's the general gist all right let's see what else happened on july 24th 1847 after 17 months of travel brigham young leads 148 mormon pioneers to salt lake city resulting in the establishment of the city or town of salt lake city it was a town at the time it was actually nothing at the time they got there and started building things and i'm sure they built it pretty quick because those mormons back then they knew how to get things done they worked as a team that is why they're called the beehive state and it has nothing to do with beehives it has to do with them all working together like a beehive i took a cultural geography class one time and the teacher brought up a theory that why are a lot of the mormon athletes so good and he gave some stat i forget what it was but of these mormon athletes they tend to do a little bit better in this and their heart rate's better and a couple different things he had all these facts they had two theories one it's they don't you know indulge in a lot of things that are bad for you like caffeine and alcohol things of that nature the other theory, which I thought was incredibly interesting, was the best DNA made it to Salt Lake City. And when I say the Mormons, this study was done with athletes from BYU. And when I say the best DNA made it, that's a rough trip across the country back in the old days. A lot of people died along the route. The ones that made it were, let's say, a little bit harder, a little bit luckier, a little bit stronger, and a little more resilient. So survival of the fittest, the weaker DNA, didn't make it past Kansas. 1864, the American Civil War, the Battle of Kernstown. Confederate General Jubal Early defeats Union troops led by General George Crook in an effort to keep them out of the Shenandoah Valley. 1901, O. Henry is released from prison in Columbus, Ohio, after serving three years for embezzlement from a bank. <laughs> Oh, Henry was two things. One, it was a delicious candy bar. I don't know if they make it anymore, do they? Let me look. Yes, they do still make it. It's put out by Nestle. Originally, it was uh, made by the Williamson's Candy Company. At least that's one of the stories. There's another story that it was created and given to them by a man named Tom Henry. And it was called the Tom Henry Bar in the late 1910s. But he sold the recipe to George Williamson in 1920. There's no credible document to the story. It's just one of the ones that floats around. But anyway, people called Tom Henry, Henry, instead of Tom. And apparently he was an attractive young man and girls would come into the candy store and talk to him all the time. And he liked to joke with them. And their common response was, oh, Henry, like that, whenever he told a lame joke. And the name stuck with the candy bar. Anyway, on to the other O. Henry. O. Henry was a writer named William Sidney Porter. He was primarily famous for his short stories, though he also wrote poetry and nonfiction. He was born in Greensboro, North Carolina, but as a young adult with a family, he found himself living in Houston, Texas. At the time, he was writing short stories. One interesting thing that I know about him is he used to like to sit in hotel lobbies and talk to people and get their life story or just talk to them about anything, normal conversation. And he would write short stories about the little information he got from them. He wasn't trying to sell it like it was a biography. It was just a way he tried to get ideas from people. And it was he was very popular. Well, in those days in Houston, he was also working at a bank. And when federal auditors decided to audit the bank one year, they found out money was missing. And I guess they pinned it on him. He was fired and then arrested. But before his hearing and before the court date, he got on a train and left the country. He lived in Honduras for a couple of years, but then found out his wife was really ill in Austin, Texas. And he came back to see her the next day he turned himself in. He was sentenced to five years in prison. He served about three years in prison, but was released for good behavior. 1950, Cape Canaveral Air Force Station begins operation with the launch of a bumper rocket. 
1959, at the opening of the American National Exhibition in Moscow, U.S. Vice President Richard Nixon and Soviet Premier Nikita Khrushchev have a kitchen debate. 1966, Michael Pelkey makes the first base jump from El Capitan, along with Brian Schubert. Both came out with broken bones. Base jumping has now been banned from El Cap. 1974, the Watergate scandal, U.S. Supreme Court unanimously ruled that President Richard Nixon did not have the authority to withhold subpoenaed White House tapes, and they ordered him to surrender the tapes to the Watergate special prosecutor. 1998, Russell Eugene Weston Jr. bursts into the United States Capitol and opens fire, killing two police officers. He is later ruled to be incompetent to stand trial. 2013, a high-speed train derails in Spain, rounding a curve that was supposed to be taken at 50 miles an hour or less. The train was going 120. The train flipped off the track, killing 78 passengers. Movies released on July 24th, 1998, Saving Private Ryan. What a good movie. In my opinion, one of the top five best war movies of all time. This is a Steven Spielberg directed film about a group of soldiers who attempt to find a paratrooper whose brothers were killed in action. Basically, a mom has five sons that were shipped off to war. And on the same day, she's about to get four letters that her sons are dead. There's only one alive. So Tom Hanks and his group of army rangers are set out and tasked to find the remaining brother and get him home alive. This film won five Academy Awards. This was based loosely on four different events that happened during World War II that all had to do with rescuing or getting one remaining brother or something of that nature back. The Sullivan brothers were real brothers, Francis, Joseph, Albert, Madison, and George. They were all brothers from Waterloo, Iowa, and they died after their ship was sunk by a Japanese submarine on November 13th, 1942. So that family lost all five of their sons in one day because they were on the same ship. From that point on, in World War II and just about anywhere, brothers couldn't serve on the same unit or anything like that to better the chances of them making it home from any kind of conflict. Sadly, the Sullivan brothers were never recovered from the ship. The cast of Saving Private Ryan was amazing. Tom Hanks, Vin Diesel, Matt Damon, Brian Cranston, Nathan Fillon, who he played a small part, but he's in there, Adam Goldberg, Ted Danson, Paul Giamatti, Tom Sizemore, Giovanni Ribisi, Dennis Farina, Edward Burns, who's a great actor. He just kind of fell off the map a few years back. I don't know what happened to him. Barry Pepper and Harve Presnell. We just talked about him last week when he died. Born on July 24th, 1969, Jennifer Lopez, or J-Lo, or Ben Lo, now that she's back here with Ben. Is she? Wait, Ben? Yeah, actually, they dated before, then he got married to Jennifer Gardner in 2005. That lasted until 2018. That's a long run. And he's been married to Jennifer Lopez since 2022. But yeah, I just had to look this whole thing up. I'm not into stars relationships, but they first began dating in 2002. After they broke up around 2004, she married someone else and he married Jennifer Gardner. They went off, had families, had kids, and then now they're back together and married. Guess he's got this thing for women named Jennifer. Anyway, it's Jennifer Lopez's birthday. And as I look at it, get even deeper into it, she's been married quite a few times. He's her fourth marriage. She was born in New York City in 1969. She is a hip-hop and R&B superstar. People call her J-Lo. She sold over 20 million records. She released her debut album in 1999 and followed it up with a certified quadruple album in 2001. She was doing a lot of other things, but she kind of got her start or got into the public eye uh, as a dancer on that show in Living Color back in the late 80s. Died on July 4th, 2020, we lost Regis Philman, cultural icon who hosted the talk show live with Regis and Kelly alongside Kelly Ripa and a game show who wants to be a millionaire. He was with all kinds of people. 1975, 1978, he was with Sarah Purcell, then with Cindy Garvey for a while from 78 to 81. Eventually, it was him and Kathy Lee, live with Regis and Kathy Lee. Then was just live with Regis for a while. Then eventually got on with uh, Kelly Ripa. Regis Philbin died of a heart attack due to coronary artery disease at a hospital in Greenwich, Connecticut. It was late in the evening. Some people report that he died on the 24th. Others report he died on the 25th. I don't know. We're going with the 24th. He was one month shy of his 89th birthday. After reading into it, apparently his death was reported as the 24th, but his tombstone says the 25th. You'd think with all the information we have these days, we could get it together and figure out when an older gentleman died. 
All right, that's today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you got some information out of it. Now go out, have a great day, and be nice to each other.